All right, this is No Excuses with Michael D. Leonardo. I'm your host, RJ Roger. Michael, how you doing, brother? Good. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Had a great weekend. My birthday, uh, Father's Day. I want to thank everybody. And I'll, I'll speak for RJ and Mikey also. We had a lot of people give salutations to us. It was really fantastic. I really appreciate it. And I can speak for the team. Uh, it was really nice, heartfelt, heart, really heartfelt and warming. Thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. You're welcome. It was, a, it was a hell of a tribute you gave me. And and the team, the, not only our team, it's, it's uh, and everybody around us, everybody that in our family, our Patronasian family, uh, I think really were touched by it. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So now they go to the Banat. They get to the Bonanno family. So we got the Columbos. That was their approval that you guys are going to stand with us. Okay. Then Gotti just says, Gotti starts, Gotti starts boasting that I got Joe Messino, the underboss of the Bonanno family, in my pocket. Um, the family was denied a seat on the commission because of drug trafficking. Um, chances of reclaiming it would greatly improve with Castellano out of the way. So they looked at Let's factor in we got the Bonanno family because I got the top guy and they need something from me and it's in their benefit because I can help them. I can give them a little sweetener, get them back on the commission, maybe help out Messino get his official position. So that sounds believable. No, 100%. John and Joe are extremely close. Yeah. What else do they have in common? What else they got in common with Angelo? Oh, the drug business? <laughs> Are they going to get mad at anybody for dealing drugs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next. <laughs> A lot of people think John had Joe Messino in his pocket. Joe Messino, was, if you lose your history on Joe Messino, this guy was extremely intelligent. This guy was... Wild red guy, the guy knew everything. I sometimes wonder if Joe Messino <laughs> says, I got John in my pocket, if he's thinking the opposite way. I'm going to use him not until I can lose him. No. Not at that time. No, not at all. Joe Messino uh, and John were extremely close. They they, they had murders together. Uh, okay. So, you know, and extremely close. You could go back and you see uh, the FBI surveillance photos when they, when they had the what he called that that hairdo. You had that hairdo. Yeah. And I will get the name of it. But uh no, they were very, very close. Gene, Gene Gotti and them and Johnny Canadia, all those guys were close with Joe. Uh Joe, Joe would have supported John in any endeavor. Don't forget, they didn't have a seat. Right? So they, they, it's irrelevant. No vote. Joe was racing it running that family. Joe, as you said. Killed a lot. Had a lot of guys killed in his family. This guy's no joke. He's serial killer, too. He had a lot of guys killed. All right, so the family's assuming that they have the Bananos with them. So that's the Colombo, that's the Banano. Um, as for the Lucchese family, Tony Ducks Corallo not only hated Castellano. I didn't know that, so that's news to me. I'm going to ask you about that. But um, Tony Ducks Corallo not only hated Castellano, but was immersed in preparing his defense in the forthcoming commission trial. So they're saying uh, Ducks is he's, he's dealing with legal issues and plus he hates Castellano. Um, so they're assuming we're OK there. Think about that. They're writing Ducks off that he's not going to have any say right in the future. Why didn't they just assume that will pull? It's a good point. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Counselor. It's a great point. And he also said that, um, so we know about the Jaguar. He says um, that the task force was successful in placing a bug in the Jaguar of, of Corallo's driver. Um, Corallo not only chatted in the car about commission meetings, but also made sneering comments about his fellow bosses, including Castellano. So they 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 knew he made some disparaging remarks against Paul already. So that's where they're assuming 
he doesn't matter. Let's just forget about him. But um, I just want to go back to your point. You asked me earlier if people talk bad about each other in the coffee clutch. I, I alluded to right. There you go. Good point. Yeah. There you go. One member of the Lucchese family, however, was a force to be reckoned with, Anthony Gaspipe Casso. Gaspipe was tough, Sammy said, but like with everybody, Frankie got along with Gaspipe and sounded him out in a roundabout way how he thought about Paul and supposed he wasn't the boss no more. So the Chico goes to Gaspipe and says, hey, what if Paul wasn't the boss anymore? He didn't ask him directly, I want to kill him, and I want you to stand with me. What do you think if Paul wasn't here? And Frankie, according to the book, Frankie DeChico says that Gas Pipe told him he didn't give a fuck about Paul. So we figured we had approval there. If ever, if he ever tried to do anything later, we could throw it in his face. So there's that's the <laughs> way of. That's the way of getting the Lucchese family. Ducks is gone. The powerhouse there is Gas Pipe. And Gas Pipe told me, I don't give a fuck about Paul. Gas Pipe's only a captain. He's not an administration. So if you ask anybody anywhere, what are you going to do? Get everybody saying they don't care about Paul? What does that mean? It's not administrative or commission approval again. Ducks is the boss until he, he, he gives it up, which they didn't know he was going to get up at this point, right? So uh, Gas Pipe is making the decision that he don't care about Paul's. It, it, to me, that falls flat, that that uh, resounding, uh, you know, a tribute that they're going to say, we're going to stand by you later on when you kill Paul. Do you think Gas Pipe don't know what he meant? What did you think he means? Gas pipe say, what do you mean? You mean after they lose the case? You think gas pipe just said nothing? Wasn't inquisitive? Of course he did. He knew where they were going if the conversation happened. Which I'm sure something happened. But now look at the chance you're taking. Now you're in another guy. A captain of another family. And they, uh, don't forget, Sammy and gas pipe were close also. Why didn't Sammy go with Frank and talk to Gas? Where's Vic in this? His partner. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's all food for thought. Like I said, you know, I want to hear a lot of this stuff, but why not? You just you just want the two families that's still in the commission. Let's put the bananas on the side. They didn't have a vote. You just want the two families, including none of the boss. Why don't you just go to the commission and lay it out again? Why don't you just go to them and lay out your case? Well, the commission is never going to approve it. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Why not? Yeah. Because not? bosses don't like killing each other. Historically. Yeah. But if the guy's at risk, if he, the, other, the other bosses are at risk that this guy may flip, they can lay that case out against them. Why take a shot, like I said earlier? Why? But why, why, why would Chin take a shot with a guy that could bury him? This is why, because they were all in the same soup at the time. <laughs> all the commission bosses were being were arrested together. Not Chen. Chen's the only one, but they, they took Fat Tony down. But Chen's the wow. only one that made it out. All the rest were taken down. Okay, they were all arrested in the case. Absolutely, and think about it. Chen is the guy that would approve it. Like I said earlier, he's the only one that's not in the case. All the other guys know they're dead. They heard the tapes of themselves and everybody else. So why why would Chin, that's what I'm saying? Why would Chin take the shot? At that point, does he really care about Paul taking a shot with him? Did he make it life? The guy's walking around with a bathrobe, playing crazy act. He ain't gonna take a shot with Paul that he may flip, especially if he has all that inside stuff of what's going on. And they present that this guy's weak. They feel he's weak. No, I think they would have proved it. I think they would have proved it. They I do. think Chin would 
Oh my God, I think they would approve killing Paul. Yep. And allowed Gotti in? That's another story. <laughs> okay. That's, no, no, that's another story. Okay. That's another story what would have transpired down the road. Uh, and that probably wouldn't have been their call. It could have been a suggestion from Chen who to put there. But, you know, each family dictates to who's the boss. You know. They would have swung behind Jimmy Brown because Jimmy Brown had a good relationship with Chen. Very good relationship with the West Side. He may believe he didn't at one point, and I could I'll talk about that down the road in another another show. Uh he may believe he didn't. He was Fox. Um but Jim would have approved it. That's my opinion. Yeah. So then we get to so we got two approvals out of Colombo family. The highest approval we have at this point is a underboss, Jerry Lang. Um, and then you have one captain in the Columbos, and then you got one captain in the Lucases. You do got an acting boss in the Bananos, but he don't count because he is on a commission. When you look at just that group there, in my opinion, tell me what you think, there's no point in even going to the other families because now you're actually putting yourself at more risk of this getting leaked out, and you guys are done. You're wiped out. It sounds like if you're going to go to these people, you might as well just be quiet and go kill Paul yourself and deal with the four families later on. Because uh, Gas Pipe can't help you. There's very uh, Joe Messino can't do nothing for you. Donnie Shax can't do nothing for you. And there's probably very little that Jerry Lane can do for you. And he's probably going to deny it if he's brought up, to, if, if, if his name is mentioned. So well, what's the point at? What's the point in even going to these guys? 100%. That, that's my problem. And, and if it did happen this way, they really didn't use their, their heads here in this. Uh, you, sh you just act. Don't tell them. Now, look, they said later on, right, we don't know who killed this guy. We're going to launch an investigation. You just told everybody. Remember the thing? Gas and Vic looked at each other. They laughed. They smiled about what John denying it and making that speech to Chin. They all knew why I said, why didn't they just kill John right there? And Sammy, right? So guess that's all he had to turn around and say, he's the underboss now, official underboss, that commission meeting down the road. John's going to really sit there and lie to me with Sammy? Sammy came and told him. These guys came and told me they were going to kill him. So what are we doing? It don't happen that way. His stories don't jive. Because he should have said that when he did that interview, that guess knew all along. Because I told them, or we told them. Now, you don't take a shot with Jerry Lang, right? You don't think Jerry Lang would have sent a message to, to Carmine? And they say, hey, listen, they're going to clip Paul. What do you think? You're the boss. Tell me what you want me to do. Jerry was that smart in the life. That's why he was the underboss of a young guy. So you don't think he would have sent a message to Carmine? He would just would have ate that without telling Carmine? They were streaming close, loyal to the end. What if what if parts of and say, you're nuts? Bring that in. You would have to bring it in. So we get to the Genovese's now, and that's where they just said, we can't talk to them. So he says here, and this is where we conclude the story. The plotters concluded that the Genovese family was the only one that they would not approach. Big Paul and the Chin went back too far, too far. They were too tight, Sammy said. They had all their big money arrangements, so we decided, fuck Chin. If it comes down to it, we'll go to war with them. And we decided when we take down Paul, we got to take out Tommy Bellotti too. They must go together. Everybody agrees to that, one hundred percent. Why take? Uh, why do you have to take Bellotti also? He, he, I don't think he would have capitulated to anything there. With, with even John. with a dead paw, even with a dead paw. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he would have accepted it. No way. That's my opinion. I, he never would have accepted it. I don't think he would have stood down. He would have been tricked, right, to a point to say. Frankie's in on this? 
Joe Watts is in on this? I, I think they made the right decision. And, and you kill a guy. I'm not, I don't mean they should have been killed. But in that sense of strat strategic moves, tell me, yes, I, I had to go. Don't forget, they resented him for being the underboss. That fast. What and if you don't kill him, and if you don't kill him, he, he's really the acting boss. If if Paul don't want to appoint somebody, right? <clears throat> if they if let's say they just kill Paul, who's the boss? Tommy. Go. He's the underboss. Did Tommy have a crew? crew? Yeah, sure. I mean, like a he's tough crew. His brother, his brother is a tough guy. He had guys around him, absolutely. He thought he would had he have the ability. Would he have had the ability to try to hold the family if or he was dead? Well, he would have had to go to the commission. That's the whole thing for backing. Okay. It's actually hit on the boss. All right. You, 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 there's see it's, the machinations, the, the things that could have occurred, they would have had to kill Tommy, whatever. He's the official underboss. They would have had to kill him. Why did they resent him for being? I mean, he didn't make this election. He was picked by Paul. But why is like you told me before? Tommy was a tough guy. This guy goes back a and goes back a while in the family, right? You said like he he didn't just arrive there. He has a. Do you think he earned his seat as underboss? He deserved no. it. No, he does. He deserved, uh, you know, what he was a captain and very loyal to Paul and Jimmy Brown. He he should have put Jimmy Brown there. Nino Gadger was on the bad terms already. Cases is going on, all that stuff. Uh, he fell out of favor with Paul. But Jimmy Brown was the guy to put there. Strong enough character at that point to, to put in. Why he skipped over Jimmy uh, is, is something to think about. Especially if that rumor, like we said earlier, that Tommy gave me, it was acting. And again, he, he fit in as underboss right away, Tommy Bellotti. So uh, that's part of his truth. So it may be true about Tommy Gambino being interim. But uh, Jimmy Brown was the guy that Paul should have put there as underboss. Even acting underboss for a little bit. It, it, it wouldn't have changed the outcome, but it, Tommy Bellotti maybe don't die. He gave him a death sentence, Paul. Paul didn't know it, but he gave him a death sentence at that point. So, overall, you can't buy. So last week we did cat, we did casos, we did um, gas pipes, commission theory. You you take suspicion with that. This here too, you're not adding up to you. Too many smart men doing too many stupid things and too many stories that just don't fit. You know, they it did happen. History shows they killed them. It's just how it happened. Sammy's the guy directing everything, it looks like, all the time. Not the case. Never happens without the Chico. If they do it, they do it on their own, they'll have a problem. But it don't happen without Frank. Frank gave his life for John Gotti. And he knew it was going to happen. He told people he felt they would be killed. He told Georgia and Chico, and Georgie told me, Frankie knew he was in trouble after that. You think he had regrets after it was done where it was like, when you're seeing all the news reports, you're probably hearing the streets talk and the streets talk. Um, you think he said, man, we, we really fucked up here. Or do you think, or, or is that like crossing the Rubicon? Like once you're there, you're there. Yeah, crossing the Rubicon. Again, he probably had his inner thoughts about it was a mistake later on. Because uh, risk reward wasn't there for him. John, Angelo, and that whole segment, that whole crew, they're, they're already in it. Frankie had nothing to do but lose the rest of his life and lost his life. Real short. He only lasted another four months. So it was a very, very bad move by Frank the Chico because in time he would have been in administration, no problem at all. Uh, every, all the families liked him. He was, like I said, when, when when you talk about everything Sammy says about Frankie not having a role or this, or he had a little role later on. No, he was he was a driving force there with John to have this done. There's a lot of 
you know, there's been podcasters and, you know, the, the general theory on John Gotti is he wasn't a good boss, that the guy did a lot of harm. And, and there's been people who've done ranking lists and they list him as one of the worst bosses in history of the Gambino family. You've heard history of the mo- of, of the five families, some people have said, but they, he definitely has been on people's, people have said he's the worst boss in Gambino family history. You, John made you. You were there with John. You were close with John. From an insider's perspective, A, B, C, D, E, F. I mean, A, B, C, D, F. How would you grade John as a boss? Do you think John was a bad boss? Good boss? 